What did you see when Trump got shot? This is commentary from James Brown. Someone tried to kill former President Donald Trump Saturday night. Yes, I know you already know that. But because of the nature of this event, I think we must be clear about what we saw. Because I have my doubts. Here's what I saw. An assassin's bullet whizzed by Trump's ear, nicking him as he spoke to thousands of supporters. He was tackled by the Secret Service, and an unforgettable, if not already iconic, image followed. Trump, defiant, disheveled, fist in the air, with blood dripping down his face as the American flag flaps behind him, urging his supporters to fight as he was ushered off the stage to a local hospital. He's okay, but several attendees are not. One person died and several were shot in a crossfire. An ER doctor in the crowd said he saw her brain matter on the ground. All these people were trying to do was exercise their freedom of peaceful, legal assembly, whether you like their cause or not. I was shocked by this. I didn't see it live. I was picking up a pizza. When I got home, the girlfriend told me. I froze for a moment and dropped my keys on the plate. This, like much these days, isn't like much I've seen in my lifetime, at least not in America. I saw a tragedy, the sum of my deepest, darkest fears about the modern condition, that were a kettle about to pop. So what did you see? No, really, that's an honest question, because the answers I've encountered run the gamut from tragedy to opportunity, from fear to glee. A living, breathing Rorschach test for our divided nation. The internet sleuths around us are focused on the minutia of the event because minutia in a case like this is everything. A curious BBC interview with a man outside the rally and other interviews like it revealed what looks like a catastrophic failure among the Secret Service. At least three people shot video of a man they claimed was bear crawling up buildings. They told the Secret Service, this will be debated for years, if not decades. Oh, the memes. Trump as Neo from the Matrix dodging bullets. Trump with God literally shielding Trump from death. YouTubers and content creators saw the shooting as an opportunity. Hopping online for emergency podcasts, Twitter, and live streams reaching, reaching record audiences. As podcaster Hotep Jesus, host of The Griff Report, often says, the grift was strong with them. Unless we forget the dozens of remixes of the video of the assassination attempt to 50 Cent's Many Men. Its lyrics read, Many men wish death upon me. Blood in my eye, dog, I can't see. I'm trying to be what I'm destined to be, and in words are trying to take my life away. Even 50 Cent himself embraced it. The gears of the Attention Academy ground on searching for their lulls and heedless of the gravity of the situation. There were instantaneous hoaxes. The shooter was claimed to be a soccer superfan who was a member of Antifa. That got me for a few minutes. Others claimed that Trump, despite being shot and hospitalized in Pennsylvania, was planning on attending the UFC fight in Denver on the night of the shooting. Yeah, right. Vince McMahon trended as the tales of Donald Trump staging this entire event, blading like a pro wrestler. Trump is a WWE Hall of Famer, after all. And the video looks awkward. Phrases like real false flag and stage trended too, with all those people playing the same tune. They're not alone. Even major news outlets expressed doubt that this incident was an assassination attempt for hours some downplaying it happening altogether. To shoot the media some bail on this one, caution in this kind of situation is necessary. Because initial reporting and breaking news situations are almost always incorrect to some degree. What we journalists don't admit, although we should, is that it takes time to learn what actually happened in a situation in the artificial yet all too common deadline of 10 minutes ago leads to many reporters and news outlets making poor choices. We saw this in spades on Saturday as TV networks broke into their programming aimed to 
carefully outflake their competition, jockeying for rating supremacy, staying on air, vamping, sharing the same information and photos over and over as they waited for morsels to reach their teleprompters instead of doing the obvious, you know, talking to people on the scene. Most outlets got to that later. One of the examples of this was on CNN. Within minutes of the assassination attempt, its national security analyst, former Assistant Secretary of Homeland Security under Obama, Juliet K.M., said, Donald Trump and the people around him perceives themselves to be under threat. And that's all that matters. That is not legitimate. That is wrong. This was disgusting, paranoid, and unwarranted. She couldn't have foreseen the deaths that followed, but it's better to say nothing than something that pointed and in poor taste as you watch the appearance of gunshots ringing out in any crowd. Actions like KM's expressed a sentiment that was best described by someone at the rally, yelling at the media, this is your fault, echoing Trump's rallying cry that the media is the enemy of the people. While I don't agree with the sentiment, the media can't be completely excused in our world of escalating rhetoric. Call someone Hitler long enough and the deranged among us will try to do something about it. The left is fretting about right-wing retaliation, and rightfully so. While the right see this as a chance to rally their base, and rightfully so. But both have created this combustible environment. Many on the left have stoked fear from fragments of concepts spouted by former President Donald Trump, his acolytes, and documents like Project 2025. They have long claimed that Trump, a hard-right former president, will end democracy by participating in democracy and then naming himself Caesar or something, while causing yet another January 6th. Call me naive, but I don't believe that's his intention. Increasingly, I've come to believe that Politicians see high office like Gollum sees the one ring. It's their precious. They'll do anything and say anything to obtain it for as long as they can. I think he's a sore loser, a liar, and a constant self-promoter who doesn't do himself any favors due to his inarticulate, flagrant, flippant style in a tone that makes progressives want to heave. All this is another group emerged on Saturday night. Lawmakers seeking clout. Right-wingers like J.D. Vance and Christy Nome sling mud, positioning themselves for his administration in eventual runs for all the presidential marbles, continuing in the long tale of MAGA rhetoric, claiming Donald Trump's rise is the product of divine providence or something. While Democrats like former President Barack Obama, Senator Chuck Schumer, and a cascade of others hold their nose and publicly condemn political violence, at least in concept. But virtually no politician, right or left, was willing to admit the trouble and potential caused by their heightened rhetoric. So what do you see? I think it's important that we're honest about what we saw in this moment, because I suspect that more and more moments like this will happen. More moments captured on social media or live streaming, opaque enough for mucho conspiracy theories to fly wildly, yet clear enough for potential retaliation. Living, breathing, high stakes Rorschach tests, ink blots filled by our imaginations, psychiatric food coloring, and modern political zealotry ultimately leading to an Archduke Franz Ferdinand moment where our political and social divisions bubble over as a blood sport follows. That's obviously a worst-case scenario, and we're clearly not there yet. But the seeds of further division were sown within moments of shots being fired. In the Bible, Ecclesiastes tells us that there's nothing new under the sun. Yet this felt new at least in my lifetime. A high-stakes test of our collective psyche, our fears, hopes, and increasingly rigid political tribes. The purpose of a system is what it does. Our media ecosystem, our social platforms, our political machinery, all of them responded exactly as designed. 
They amplified division, monetized outrage, and left us further apart than ever. As we process this near miss with history, it's worth asking, is this the system we want? One that turns tragedy into spectacle, that sees assassination attempts as content fodder? Are there other options? Is this the only way? Or can we build something better? A system that brings us together in moments of crisis rather than driving us further apart. I suppose the choice is ours. What do you think and what did you see when Trump got shot? Let me know in the comments and support my work at jamesbrowntv.substack.com. On that note, I'm James Brown, and as always, be well.